Earth is already dead, and we don't even know it. It's happened before and it will happen again. By this I mean global extinctions have already occurred. Around the entire planet, of course. These came from gamma ray bursts, super volcanoes, too much CO2 in the system, too much oxygen in the system, and even planet collisions. But today I wanted to focus on something in particular that is a huge hazard to the planet we call home. And that is asteroid impact. Now too much CO2 is also something we have to watch for, so I'll also do that in this video. So Earth is already dead. How do we know that? Well, it turns out there might be an asteroid big enough to kill all life on Earth heading our way for 2036. Now, the probability of this is, of it hitting Earth, is actually very low, but it's very high at the same time compared to other asteroids passing by. So, let's check out what would happen if something similar to this hit the planet. So if we go into minor objects, we should be able to find some pretty big asteroids. We are looking for a 14, 13 kilometer object. Now it it's not known on where it will hit, so we're gonna hit it around the American region and we'll do Central America, of course, which is a big continent in itself. So a impact even smaller than this would wipe out most of life on Earth, but within a few minutes it will wipe out all life on Earth. So Earth is already dead, a collision course has been found, people are bloody freaking out because there's an asteroid about to hit Earth, what would you do? That's a question for you guys. What would you do in your last few days on this planet? So it seems like it's going to hit around California, I was aiming for Central America, but this will do. So, by now, we won't be feeling much effects. We'd see this glow in the sky, we'll know it's the end of the world. Of course, there'll be bloody human collapses, economy collapses, bloody terrorist attacks, everything like that, just to get the most food for this impact. Of course, the velocity would be quite more than 10 kilometers a second, although 10 kilometers a second is quite fast in itself. So it might even, yep, it's going to hit around off the coast of Oregon maybe, and I could imagine this would cause a huge tsunami. So by now, we'd be able to see, yeah, we'd be able to see a flare of light in the sky, quite bright, maybe as bright as the sun, maybe it appears as big as the sun, because in our view, the sun looks like about two kilometers in the sky, which is pretty large. Okay, slow it down for the impact, and it's about to impact, it's quite big, and we have impact. Look how fast everything spreads around the planet. This is under a minute, and it's, I, I hate how it's going square ways now. I prefer the circle way, but it, it would, it would travel out evenly. It wouldn't be like a square. See how it's developing into a circle? That's how it would be first at impact. So it seems like the bloody um, crater is quite big. Shockwave is about to hit New York even under a minute. Maybe on a minute. Fragments have flared up to into our atmosphere. Life around the region, hit region, dead. Temperature, 37.9 degrees. It's risen 20 degrees or so, which would cause quite a bit of impact on our climate, bigger storms, etc. Secondary hits are happening with fragments maybe as big, maybe bigger. Sometimes they can eject bigger masses out, causing even more damage. The after hit region, maybe the entire Pacific Ocean and all of the United States. How is our planet coping with this? It's not coping at all. Look at all the the craters gonna extend from all these secondary impacts. It's gonna be like a lake of mantle. Look how it extends right down California. 
and this all only in six minutes. How's New Zealand going? New Zealand's just like, meh. We're not feeling anything yet, so it doesn't matter. Of course, we'd be in one of those stages where we're panicking. So it seems like I've lost Earth's orbit for some reason. I think I clicked off it. I don't know why. Um, oh, I don't think I did, but that's no matter. So impacts are over. So it seems like it's not having as much as that effect as I thought it would, but it definitely would have caused a firewall to go around the entire planet, and it's not ejected. It's probably it would have ejected heaps more gases, but we can't see that, and that would have surrounded the Earth with ash, and that's what kills life. Storms develop. Global cooling starts to develop. We can see that because of the ash trapping out sunlight. Crops start to die and animals start to die. Over time, yeah, around 14 degrees we stay stable at. 15 degrees after about a month. And as we can see, not much has happened. Of course, we've got all these new craters that will be off the coast and inland in the United States, but we can't see that. We cannot see that at all on the simulation. This would also impact on the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere, which brings us to our next test. We'll just use the same planets because it's mostly the same. How much CO2 would, what would it look like if there was so much CO2? I just have to add a bit of water. It would not look like this, guys. It would somewhat look like this. Let me just add a little bit by a little bit. Let's add seven. See how it didn't have much of an impact? Can you see it? What if we go 3, 9? Still no impact. Cody, what are you doing? Okay, you want a bigger impact? Let's go 69. Still nothing. How about that? How about that? So 169, this is a genuine test. This is how much damage a hundred meters of water sea level rise can do but to be realistic we need to look more towards maybe 20 so it looks something like th this so it seems like I have bugged out the game so I might have to reload the game it seems like the impact bugged it out so let's test that again so basically, it takes 40 years for our actions to reflect back on the Earth's environment, if you didn't know that. I learned that in geography, so I'm going to see what the Earth would look, will look like. So they think it's going to be a rise of 20 meters within 200 years, so we'll do that. And it seems like not much has changed, a bit more water leveled, water pushes more inland. Not much at all. How about New Zealand? How's my home? How is my home? How's Australia? You can see Australia has bigger lakes now. Let's just... I love how the update added it so you reset it and it's, it's, it's good. it just stays at that speed you had it at earlier. So Australia is one of those bigger impacts. A bigger lake in the bloody middle territory of Australia. Papua New Guinea, submerged underwater, low-lying areas. America's not too bad. Indonesia, definitely some impacts there. You can see the Philippines. Even Taiwan. India, India. Thailand. Vietnam, quite a bit of impact. Even Central Europe. Central Europe has bigger lakes and oceans now. How's the United Kingdom? And look at Italy. Italy has a bit more water, but not too much. It's kind of weird. You'd think it would even out. United Kingdom? So, quite submerged. Believe it or not, that used to be United Kingdom. What? So the United Kingdom is one of those places that would be affected quite badly. 
Looking back at my home, New Zealand's not actually impacted that much. Not that much. So what's another, I don't know, five meters do? Okay, so quite a bit of damage now to Australia, my neighbor. Um, we can see that the outer layers are now submerged as a bigger, there's a river out to the actual ocean now along with this lake. And of course, the ocean extends up in here with a few lakes. Philippines, mostly submerged. So it looks like an island chain now. But of course, earthquakes could rise that. Japan, not too bad, Japan. United Kingdom, just a bit more submerged. Italy, suddenly feel a bit harder. Other parts of Central Europe. Yep. So let's stop rising the water. And let's think about temperature. They predict that in 200 years the average temperature will be 26 degrees, not 256, 26.3 degrees. Look at this. Not much ice left. Not at all. Not at all. No glaciers at Papua New Guinea. Not... Mm, there's still the Himalayas that have huge glaciers just this used to be a very cold area with heaps of glaciers basically so it seems like the temperature is starting to lower because it's a realistic clim climate basically so another 1000 years 65 degrees what happens look at that no glaciers left maybe a few in the Himalayas not at all actually so the earth is becoming a dried up brown ball. Maybe we're alive still. Technology st could be that advanced. How about 85 degrees? How's 85 degrees for you guys? Pretty hot. Water's starting to boil around areas. Huge storms. 125? Brown. The earth is going brown. How's the ocean? Yep, the ocean starts to boil up. Huge storms keep depositing water. And that's basically it. So it's not that much of an impact in the way of the water. There'd be huge, huge storms impacting land and depositing water. So that scale would go quicker. Huge storms hitting in the entire planet. How about 10,000 years of carbon dioxide? 1,200. Mantle starts to come in okay now this is unrealistic how because the atmosphere would just burn out and it would cool down instead what if it went the other way what if it's negative 25 no i don't want you to keep at around 900 aren't you negative 25 thank you so it seems like i screwed it everything over because i burnt away the atmosphere but okay so basically all the ocean turns to ice but it's not enough to turn the entire planet into ice. Of course, we'd, return, we'd see returns of glaciers inland. We know that as a fact. But the entire Earth is, well, basically an entire glacier. Like, But that could retreat, which would create new oceans and new landforms around the entire planet. So guys, that is some ways that Earth could die in the way of a global extinction. This would kill every organism apart from microorganisms. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe for more content. Twitter and Instagram links are in the description. Remember to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if you disliked it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.